So December Hugo in Scandinavia, why should you care? So, um, well, it's, uh, it's the home of Hugo and uh, there's a reason why it's the home of Hugo, I believe. It's the natural setting really, the environment um, and also uh, our heritage that has kind of informed, you know, what Hugo is. Um, but that doesn't mean that Hugo has to be isolated to a specific geographical area. Uh, and in fact, uh, I do my talks because I want to inspire people to learn more about the true power of Hugo and also so that they can take inspiration away and, and create kind of their own traditions and their own take on it that fits to them because Hugo is also highly, highly subjective. So, uh, Hugo in Scandinavia. Now, December in is kind of what I, we call Hugo high season. Uh, the days become increasingly short. Uh, the people who live really far to the north, some of my friends up in northern Norway near the polar circle uh, or the Arctic circle, they uh, will only see a tiny glimpse of daylight uh, on the horizon and that's it. So this is really the season of light and the season of hope. Now, even our ancestors did this. So uh, the Vikings would get together this time of year. They would have all kinds of traditions to bring light and hope and uh, a sense of comfort into their life. And uh, yes, uh, in, in modern day Scandinavia, uh, we've got all the mod cons, you know, central heating, um, you know, everything really that you could want to have a comfortable life, which our ancestors didn't have. They lived a life that was really about, um, you know, starvation, you know, this time of year was a real concern. Uh, and also, obviously, things like freezing to death. Would you actually get through the season? Would you be able to experience another spring? And although technically we don't have that, I think we as human beings, we still crave um, that sense of comfort, that sense of knowing that uh, spring will return, light will return. And uh, that's where Hugo can help us really. So uh, December is a, in many ways, sorry, <coughs> I'm recovering from a cold. So I must remember to have my, my, my ginger drink here. Mm. So December is very much about uh, bringing the light in and bringing nature in because uh, it might now become increasingly hard to go outside. It might be very cold. It might be very treacherous with ice and snow. Um, so it's all about connecting in with nature, which we are a part of as much as we can uh, to harness the power of nature. Because although we've gone through autumn and all the leaves have died back and now it's cold and maybe, you know, maybe it's all gray and, and, and sparse, uh, nature is not dead. Nature is still alive, but nature is hibernating at the moment. And uh, we still need to tap into the power of nature and it can help us set the scene for our huga as well. So it's very much about bringing nature in. And I mean, even modern Christmas tradition has got this. You know, why would you otherwise put a tree into your living room? Um, and why would you decorate it with things that often, again, have got, um, uh, how should I say, resonate back into nature? Um, so uh, December is really the time in Scandinavia where we start uh, making decorations that are often very nature-based, that links us back to nature. So uh, one of them is a so-called uh, Advent, Advent wreath, uh, and uh, even the Vikings did this. So it's normally created um, with uh, pine, pine branches in a circular shape. And the circular shape is really um, remembering, you know, the, the, the wheel of the year, the, the wheel of life, the, 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 the cycle of life and the, the secular uh, experience that we have of life. Uh, and one of the reasons that our ancestors did this was in order to kind of celebrate, but also remind themselves that 
you know, spring would return. You know, this is a part of life and we are going through it. And uh, one of the reasons that obviously they would use the pine um, branches uh, and pine to kind of create it with was because it's an evergreen and it's um, not only does it smell beautifully inside the house, but also it's uh, it's it's the perfect in season thing, just like Christmas trees, really. Um, and it it connects us back to um, nature. Um, so in Scandinavia, traditionally, um, this will either have have four candles for the four sun Sundays in Advent, or it'll have lots of other um, natural elements to it: apples, pine cones. Uh, moss, anything that's found in nature. And uh, people, you know, will still go for walks in the winter to kind of collect this, obviously foraging very, very mindfully to make sure that we do it in a sustainable way. And uh, take this together and then you, you come home and you build it together. And ideally you build it together with other people. You build it in the warmth of your home with a hot drink, you know, maybe with a candle if it's safe to have one going whilst you're being creative because that is a hazard in itself. And um, kind of that whole process of making something is also very, very important for December. Now, there's lots of, um, it's, it's, it's become very trendy again. There's a lots of groups and lots of community based uh, initiatives where people come together to maybe go on the walk uh, to learn more about nature. Because even in Scandinavia, sometimes people can get very uh, remote from nature. If you you work a nine to five job, although that will be eight to four in Scandinavia, uh, and you know, you have a family life, you might not be able to go out and connect as much. So, you know, you can go on walks, have talks, learn more about nature, where you find uh, and, and gather, you know, sustainably the, the things for your own Christmas decorations. And uh, obviously, we have this in other parts of the world as well, maybe known as a Christmas centerpiece. Uh, and often there's like, um, there's, th there's lots of workshops going around on th this time of year as well, where people kind of come and do these things. And um, so our wreath is not normally to hang on the, on the front door, like in England, where I'm based now, we see that all the time. We have it inside and we have it uh, normally somewhere around the dining table or maybe the coffee table somewhere where the family gathers and you can enjoy uh, the lighting of the candle together. You can enjoy the smells of nature together. And it's that reminder, that constant reminder of the light, kind of the hope in this really, really dark season. Other things that we do this time of year is obviously create other decorations as well. Decorations for our home. It can be things like uh, drying oranges and, and making them into te decorations together with cinnamon sticks. Uh, it can be uh, putting cloves into oranges to hang around the house. Again, in ancient times, sometimes this was linked to kind of warding off evil. But I also very strongly believe that it is about... Um, stimulating all our senses and creating this sense of comfort um, of being held in the moment and in our home. <coughs> and other decorations as well, which is obviously now known as Christmas decorations, that we can pull together. And I'm going to do a, a separate video just on that um, so that we can really get into how you can get some ideas for creating some of these things yourself as well. And obviously, it's the time of light. So light is very essential, especially if you live uh, in a part of the world where you might only have like maybe an hour or two hours of daylight. You know, and like I said, I know some of my friends that live really uh, high up in Norway, they have like it's just out and you have to you have to learn to cope with it and one of the reasons we learn to cope with it is a and this is a reminder for everyone to go outside and make use of the daylight that there is even if it's like barely there and the fresh air go out make use of it and feel nature okay because like I said sometimes we think oh everything is dark everything's dead no it's not it's hibernating it's still there and it still has so much um, great health benefits and energy to give us.
Um, but obviously, this is also the time of year to bring the light now really into the homes. And there are so many ways of doing that. I know fairy lights are very, very um, trendy and I love them too because they're very easy and convenient. Traditionally, obviously, it would be candles. And there's many different uh, light uh, traditions. So I mentioned the Advent wreath that has like four four candles on it for the four weeks on Sunday but often there'll be like lots of these as well which all take like little candles and some of some of things like this um, might have like a thing that can can rotate and roll around um, spin around it as well when with the heat of the candles that generate um, and it can be a lovely paper stars to uh, often hang in the window and one of the main reasons we like to hang those in the window in uh, in Scandinavia is again as a reminder to ourselves and our, our neighbours that we are together in this. And there is, it's a bit like you know the the, the Christian, the guiding guiding star. Well, it's it's the reminder that the light is there for us and um, it's it's shining for all of us. And um, it's that that we're all in this together and we can all have that reminder that we are all we're all here we're all in the same boat and we are all uh, going to help each other you know if if need be but we are going to get through this together as well this really really dark time by creating light displays and obviously some people go really you know to town with the light displays and they have uh, lots of beautiful light decorations around the house um and also outside the house now in Scandinavia it's quite common to have a little uh, Christmas tree, maybe a tree that's already in your garden and you put lights on that as well. Um, and there's many variations of this and again it just gives people I think that sense of uh, togetherness and joy. You don't just do it for yourself, you do it for your neighbours um, and it kind of lifts the whole community spirit. So light is extremely um important um but there's also uh, other things that are linked into the heritage to kind of remind ourselves of this uh getting through this dark time and um one of those is actually standing right next to you to me which are um a nissa okay so uh i have done talks about nissa before so this is just going to be very brief so you can go and look at those talks about the nissa but some people call these gnomes so if you live in an english part of the world you might Call this a gnome. Uh, they are very distinctive, not gnomes in Scandinavia. They are known as Nissa. And um, there's many different variations of this. is like more uh, of the modern style gonks, I think they call them. Gonks have actually taken inspiration from the Nordic Nissa in order to create them. Hence the hat over. They haven't got any eyes, these ones. Normally Nissa has got eyes. But basically, they are dressed a bit like uh, country folk would have been um, in their finest um three four hundred years ago and for a reason because nissa uh, belong to uh, the houses and uh, they are there to take care of the owners and sometimes they become more lively uh, around christmas time uh, so a lot of people will have nissa around the house as well i love this one he's got really really long legs and uh, he can shrink as well which is yes my little nissa so uh, Nissa um, are kind of little, I, I guess some people will call them elves, and again, they're not necessarily elves, but they are known as house spirits, basically, in, um, in Scandinavia. And it's believed that every house has one, and they are there to ensure that people behave in the best way possible, um, so that uh, not only towards other people, but also uh, towards nature and towards the house. And uh, they are there to ensure that people honor traditions. Now, that doesn't mean that you actually have to do everything the way that it's always been done. Um, but I guess you could call them a bit like the morality police. And they are there to remind us that, again, we are not alone. We are part of a, a greater, bigger um scheme of things we are connected we are connected with the nature around us uh, we are connected uh, even you know like with with our environment like in our house which is one of the reasons why Hugo is so important for both our physical and our mental well-being and we are connected 
to, uh, you know, like the wider community as well. We are connected even to, you know, people that we might not know that well. But we are in the sense that we are all, like I say, in this community, in this same boat together. And the Nissa are really there to make sure that we um, remember that. Because sometimes, especially, I guess, in the winter, and this is, again, historical setting, uh, if, if food was scarce or, you know, uh, people were trying to kind of stick to their own because it's a long season, we don't know if we'll have enough food to get through. It's a reminder to, to share with everyone else uh, and to be really good you know uh, if uh, especially farmers to be really good towards all their livestock all their animals to also uh, feed you know like stray cats that would come in because it's uh, it's that thing of the the joint responsibility um, of us getting through this season together so the Nissa are there all year round and they can get very, very mischievous at the, around Christmas time. Um, and like I said, they are sometimes, the reason they are that is because they want to remind us that um, we are not alone. We are part of, of the bigger whole. So, and obviously they are Hugo. I mean, look at him, you know, he's, he's really cute. So this one, uh, we've got, my son has, has found a little space for him where he will go and he will, he will look after the house. Uh, and I have actually got one that's out all year round as well as a reminder, because they're not just for Christmas, although at Christmas they are in their red and, and finest. So Scandinavia, uh, sorry, Hugo in uh, just December in Scandinavia is, is many different things. But I think it's all, uh, to sum it up very briefly, it's all to do with the fact that um, we are influenced by the nature around us, the fact that nature is changing, life might become a bit harder. I mean, even in our modern world, we can go like, oh, it feels harder. Maybe this, it's the less sunlight, you know, maybe we're getting stressed. It's, it's that sense of... Um, Again, it's this collective feeling, you know, that of the stress of the season because uh, nature has gone into this hibernation and we just don't get as much vitamin D from the sunlight. We don't get maybe as much fresh air and exercise as we usually do. Um, so it's a, it's a reminder for us to, uh, to acknowledge that we are part of this greater whole of nature and that we can create Hugo to for our own mental uh, and physical well-being and it's centered around the things that i think that we need to know the most at this time of year a it's the light it's the returning of the light uh having lots of light around the house uh, not just for ourselves but also to kind of share with our neighbors to incorporate nature into our home into our Hugo practice again as a reminder that this is a, a season in a whole year and uh, you know the days might seem really long but they uh, or actually they, they're really short but you know they will get longer again if we're talking daylight and uh, then the fact that uh, we are all in the same boat and I mean even the Vikings knew this they had um, this time of year they had obviously big celebration that would last for uh, 12 days, 12 nights known as Yule, and they would gather in their long houses, invite everyone in the community. They would have together, they would have brought in the big uh, oak logs, now known as, as Yule logs, uh, and uh, they, would, they would share the food and drink together um, to ensure that everyone would get through the season all right but also to lift each other's spirit. And um, therein also remembering that, you know, uh, the Hugo part is also remembering that connection and nurturing that connection in whatever way we can. Maybe by going for a nature walk together, maybe by doing an activity together, maybe by creating some Christmas decorations together. And if you want some inspiration with that, then I hope that you will check out my next video. So, I hope that this little uh, talk about December Hugo uh, in Scandinavia has given you some ideas as to how simple it really is uh, and how complex we can make it, but also um, 
how liberating it is to know that it's really just about a few key aspects and it can change the way we feel about the season, the way um, we look after ourselves throughout the season. So having said that, I hope you uh, have a lovely December ahead. And this obviously everything that I've talked about for December and it goes into January as well. This is for like the entire winter and the darkness of the season. Um, and there it will soon be over. So let's enjoy it for what it is and for the opportunities that it brings us to Hugo in a very, very special way. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.